Hey guys, D-Lo with the Stuff of Legend here. I just want to let you know that we're going to be watching a interview I did on Instagram Live with Leanna Ramirez from Power Rangers Beast Morphers who plays Roxy. She's campaigning right now for the role of Kate Bishop in the MCU Disney Plus series Hawkeye. So check this out and let me know what you think down below in the comments and give her some love and follow her on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and check out her campaign and let us know whether or not you support her for the role of Kate Bishop. Thanks guys. Hey, what's up guys? We've got a live interview that's going to be happening very, very shortly. But We have uh, Liana Ramirez is going to be interviewed today for her campaign. And I'm really excited because this is something I'm super passionate about. If you guys have seen my YouTube channel or you've followed me here on Instagram, you know that not only have I been um, supportive of Liana, but also I'm really excited about the content that she's campaigning to be a part of. And so it's and also where she's come from as well. So coming off of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, very exciting. Liana, what's up? Everyone, tell Liana what's up. Say hey to Liana Ramirez. Is it working? Yeah, there we go. Hey, got Woo! you in here. Hi, how are you? Good. It's good to see you in person. It's good to talk to you uh, outside of a DM. Yes, exactly. Very nice to meet you over uh -huh. DM and now Instagram Live. Super yes. Fun. Oh man, I'm so excited. When when I had heard about your campaign, I mean, lately most of the videos that I've been doing have been Young Avengers related and telling people, hey, the um, all the stuff that we're doing, you know, like with all the all the Marvel yeah. and um, all that stuff, all the shows are are building specifically into Young Avengers, yeah, and yeah. specifically Kate Bishop is the linchpin because she's the one that gets that team back together right before they were about to split apart. Exactly. It was like, exactly. That's so, so crazy, the coincidence. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, and I, I, when I, when I saw, I think it was um, someone, I can't remember who it was. It was one of my fan caster buddies had sent me um, an image of yours saying, what do you think about her for, uh, for Kate Bishop? And I was like, that works completely. I like that a lot. And I hadn't seen Beast Morphers yet. Like I hadn't, I hadn't seen you yet. So for, you know, when I, when I saw that I was going purely on like the aesthetical so look, fun. I was like, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Cause I have, this is the first comic book I ever read for um, young Avenger. Dude, dude. Look. Oh, <laughs> dude, it's so good, right? It's really good. I finished it like, uh, I think like four weeks ago. It's so good. It's really it's one of my favorite reads. It's yeah, it's, I I what blew my mind was I had for some reason always had this like idea that like the X Men and the Avengers were kind of separate, but no, they're not. I don't know why I had that preconceived idea, but they're and then seeing them together and this was like like it blew my yeah. mind. Yeah. Well, it's it's amazing because the like all of these kids like most most of them have already gotten the groundwork set up um in the mcu or in the tv yeah. shows or the tv shows that they've confirmed it's it's prepped and ready for these these kids to join in but it's also like wiccan and speed or you know mm -hmm. it's it's scarlet witch you know it's yeah. it's vision yeah. and that's that's originally mutants obviously the mcu they were like oh we're gonna yeah. call them miracles and you know go a different yeah. route but it's it's still mutants it's just legality right yeah, absolutely. It's the groundwork is all there and it's going to be really exciting to see what they do. And I think if they're smart, they're going to continue this and it's going to be something that for years and years, and years, people get to grow up with this kind of like we did with Star Wars and Power Rangers. It's just like keep making right. it for the next generations. And I, I really hope that they do do that. Yeah. And I, I heard somewhere, I think it was like, uh, like something about Beast Morphers being the 22nd season or something. I think Actually, 27? we're the 26th. We're the 26th. 26th? Yeah. Dude, that's amazing. And it's such a legacy, too. Like, I grew up on Power Rangers, and granted, I was I was born in 92, so for me, I, I didn't, I wasn't there for, like, the original, um, 
like Mighty Morphin. I was a yeah. child, I was a baby, you know. Right. But when it, watching reruns with all my older cousins, you know, they're all children of the '80s and and whatnot, and they were yeah, yeah. they're always like playing me play with the toys and stuff. So I grew up surrounded by Mighty Morphin, and um, man, I my whole childhood was just like begging my parents to take me to Walmart so I could get the next transforming toy and like all the like little pieces that would fit together and stuff. So for that, it was, um, it was really, uh, it was really like shaping me to fall in love with all forms of superheroes from a Power Rangers base, you know? Yeah. And like, uh, I think they're in talks of doing yet another, uh, live action movie for Power Rangers with like a completely different cast and all this stuff. Um, and it's gonna be really exciting to see what they do because just the concept of Power Rangers having young adults or even teens being these superheroes in really cool colors is awesome. Like you can do so much with that. So I hope they do a really good job. Yeah, it, it almost feels like, um, it almost feels like a like some sort of a Jack Kirby idea, like for the art style of Marvel, all that yeah. old like, outer space everything's super vibrant guardians of the galaxy yeah. type yeah. like the bursts of color but that's you know it's that's something that they know what kids are all about but they also infuse great like morals great lessons and it's always been you know something that everyone could watch it's a it's a family show it's it's designed for kids right but it's you know it's better than probably i would say 95 percent of the shows out right now because it's all like random humor which is not bad right. but it's just simply i i don't think it's something that you in you get inspired by like when you see you know the power rangers standing up for one another and that kind of thing so it's it's just right. fun it is really fun and i i think our show is doing a really good job specifically beast morphers with making it a show where of course it's geared towards um younger kids but the parents can watch. Like, like mm -hmm. me and my, my friends can watch it and go, yeah, that was great. That was really entertaining. That's a solid show. And yeah. I think that speaks volumes of, like, moving kind of, like, away from just making it for kids. It's kind of making it for everybody. But, yes, of course, it is for kids. And right. I and I think that, that, yeah, I, I think that that's something that I was worried about when, when Nick, or when, rather when Hasbro bought yeah. Power Rangers from Saban, because everyone was, it's kind of like, oh, you know, Disney buys Star Wars, Disney buys Marvel. At first, yeah. everyone's worried. And uh -huh. then you're just like, what's the change going to be? What's what's going to right. be detracted from my Rangers? And right. then you come to find out Disney buying Marvel was the best thing any fan could ever have asked for. Yeah. You know, it's and they're doing really a new. good job with Star Wars. Yeah, it's just new. So everyone's like, oh, gosh, it's new. What's going to happen? Everyone freaks out just because we don't know what to expect. And I think mm -hmm. everyone who plays business well wants to make it just kind of how it was and even better. So yeah, right. And and so like this the same way with like Power Rangers. When when I had heard about your campaign and you had reached out to me and you were saying, "Hey, my name is Leanna," and you kind of introduced yourself, <laughs> I was like, first of all, I was taken back. I was like, "Holy cow!" a Rangers freaking reach, reaching out to me. This is amazing. I, I full on geeked out. I was like, what the heck? I told, I called my mom. I called my sister. I, I'm not kidding. I called like I'm, my wife, everyone. I was like, dude, I got a freaking message from a Ranger. And so then what I did was I, I went and I immediately started watching the show because I wanted to know, like, you know, obviously if, if you have a campaign going, I don't yeah. want to just go off of the fact that you look, and this is, you know, I oh. mean, it's like a, a compliment. You okay. look exactly like the character. Well, I was going to say that you, I want to make sure that I agree with your campaign and that, you know, Absolutely. I do fan casting on my channel. And so I want to make sure that I know the, the people that I'm talking about, if I'm yeah. going to recommend them for a role. So I immediately, after I got the message from you, I, I think I said something like, you know, awesome. I'm super honored you reached out, blah, blah, blah. And and then I was like, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, no, <laughs> like no, right I, away. I think I think you totally should do that too. Like I I would probably say, please look at my stuff, look what I've been in, and make a decision for yourself to think if this would be good for me or not. Um, because I would be the same exact way. That would be the first thing I do. I'm like, okay, who are you as an actor or an actress? What have you been in? Do you have a lot of credits? Like, just I'm gonna research you. And that's really cool that you did. Really, really cool. <laughs> Yeah, and thank you. And I, I wanted to, I, I was, I was 
holding out on watching Beast Morphers because of the Hasbro thing. And because of my skepticism, I was just like, I don't know if I should. But when you reached out, then it compelled me. I was like, I need to watch this if we're if I'm going to try to endorse you. I need to at least see what you what you're yeah. about, what you've done. And I figured the best place for me to start was just by taking taking the the leap of faith and watching the Hasbro era of Power Rangers. <laughs> and I can't tell you how grateful I am because what? it is no joke. I, probably next, and this is just a personal like thing for me is like Ninja Storm is probably my favorite because that was what I, okay. that was the first one my mom let me watch without being like, I think it's too violent. Are the monsters too scary? You know, like I was already old enough at that point. Right, so my right. mom wasn't like saying like, no, you can't watch this anymore. So I was watching Ninja Storm. That was the first one I ever saw all the way through from start to finish. Yeah. And to me, that's like always been my favorite. But that, but that being said, I don't think there's been better character writing for a Power Rangers show than there is now for Beast Morphers. I kind of have to agree in a non-biased way. When we were all reading the scripts, we were like, this is really good. The character development is really strong. The plots are strong. And I mean, that's the best thing to go into a show as an actor to be like, everything's really strong from this point of view. Okay, I think we're gonna film and I think it's gonna be really good. Let's cross our fingers. And it ended up being that way so far. So it's been really awesome to hear such positive feedback from you guys about the show. It's been, oh, it's been so cool. Yeah, I, I'm super, I'm super excited to keep watching because I, right now I'm on, I think it's episode nine or something. Because oh, yeah. my, my, I got there and then my wife was like, I was telling her about it so much. She's like, well, now I kind of want to watch it. And so <laughs> yeah. I was like. Okay, you know, so now it becomes a thing where, like, in our house, if my wife wants to watch something, I can't watch it without her. So then right. I have to go back and then we watch it together. But that was awesome <laughs> for me because then I got to, like, I got to watch all the episodes again. And the the CGI is so good for all of that, like, the, either the yeah. action sequences or when they, like, I don't know how you guys did it exactly with, like, when you when you had the um, the teleporters, like, um I don't know, beam in the, uh, the, the weapons or also with the freaking Megazords and the Zords. They look yeah. so good. Specifically. I love that Megazord. It looks like a freaking Gundam. It's crazy. They look really good. I yeah. mean, like, we're all like, dang, that's scary. I don't want to run into that. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have a favorite Zord so far? Oh my gosh. Someone asked me this recently and I have no idea. There's so many that are really good, but yeah, I'm, I don't know if I'm biased with this show, but I think ours looks super good. Like, super, yeah. super, super good. So I, I, I think so far, I think so far I uh, on the show, and I'm only at episode nine, but I really, I like the Megazord, of course, but I really do like, um, at first I was a little thrown off by it, but I really like the design of the, um, the, the yellow bunny helicopter Zord. That thing's <laughs> really cool. <laughs> it is really cool. It, at first you're like, what is that? Why is it jumping around like a bunny? But then you're like, okay, it's actually really badass. This is awesome. Yeah. It's freaking cool. <laughs> I it love it. It's really cool. They're all really cool. Yeah, they are. I, I went and I, I, I took my, my daughter. We were going to go get a um, uh, one of the morphers. Yeah. But they were all sold out. All of them oh, were sold out at Target. Dang, yeah. that's awesome. All, all the toys were sold. I was, I was looking for either the Yellow Ranger or a Roxy, because obviously, you know, I'm campaigning with you. Right. And I was gonna find like one of those, but they're all sold out. Oh so my gosh. I ended up not being able to pick up one of those toys because there were none. <laughs> so <laughs> it's obviously doing really well. Like, I think you can order them online if you don't wanna be like, oh, I can't wait and find it in a store. So I think that's, there's an op like options like that available. Just right, so and I, I'm totally gonna get know. one. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that way everyone watching can check that out. It's it's so cool. I I used to have all the like all the um, morphers, and then I had like a the navy blue ranger from from Ninja Storm. I had his suit. Okay. I would wear that like every single day as a kid. Um, so yeah, it was like I didn't even I didn't even take it off to like go to bed. I would go to bed, and my parents would get mad at me and be like, "Dude, you're like, like ten. Would get over it." Yeah, it's like, come on, man. Like you can be a power ranger during the day, but like. Put some pajamas on, man. Like, come on. 
Yeah. <laughs> but I, I get did. that you take your job really seriously. We get it, but come on. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, that, and that was, you know, that was something fun for me. I, that made me really want to get into martial arts. And that was yeah. one of the first things that inspired me to do that, that kind of thing. But you've been in martial arts for a very long time. Like, how, when did you first start doing, like, martial arts or stunt training? Yeah, I started about, I would say, like, five, six years ago. It mm -hmm. kind of started for me um, right when I first started acting. And I okay. was really struggling with um, confidence going into audition rooms. I was really shy, but I had, like, I was also really outgoing. I just got really, like, into myself and super aware when I went into an audition room. And my mom was like, I right. need to get you to do something to break you out of your shell and make you a little bit more confident because, like, you have to drive, you have the motivation. She's there's a little speed bump. So I started taking right. uh, martial arts and actually my martial art instructor was the uh, L Blue Ranger from Lightspeed Rescue. Uh, yeah. His name was Mike Chat. And so I started training under him and during like his guidance, through his guidance um, and all the classes, I started really breaking out my shell and mm -hmm. I became super confident. And from that point forward, I had started booking and yeah, it, it ended up being really great for me. And I that's why I really much encourage um, martial arts for everybody because it, gain, it gives you a confidence that's unreal. Yeah, no, seriously. I, for, for me, that was something that I had always, always wanted to do. And my mom was super like, like, no, like violence, no hitting your brother. And right. like, um, and I was always just like, no, it's, you know, it's fine. This is something we want to do. Right. And when I finally did eventually get into martial arts, um, it was, it was with a gentle, a gentleman or a couple of guys that had worked um, in the stunt industry. They were in the matrix. They were in blade. Oh, they were in, wow. uh, yeah, they were in a bunch of cool stuff. They were, um, it's a gym out here in Fremont in Northern California. Not far, not very far, about 30 minutes from San Jose where I'm at. Oh, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, you're SoCal, right? Yeah, I'm in LA, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was super cool because, like, as soon as I started doing that, um, and you start getting, like, you get, a, you get like, mind, body awareness, yeah. being able to, like, say, I want to do something and then find the path to do that, work towards right. that thing, accomplish that goal. It really helps to unlock that. And especially with acting, I know that it, it – really helps to get you out of your head space out of out of your head and really start to help you act in the moment yes. um, with your partners absolutely and that was something like i struggled with um whenever whenever i first started acting was i was self-directing i'd be yep. like hovering over my head and be like what's my face doing are my emotions coming across can you tell that i'm scared right now and yeah. my one of my acting coaches like she started yelling at me stop self-directing Stop it! And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And so I finally <laughs> learned to stop doing that. And I was like, okay, now I know exactly how to just be in the moment with everybody. Um, and mm -hmm. taking my acting to the very next level. And yeah, it's it's great. <laughs> it was great. Wow. And and then you said that you started doing you started doing martial arts and acting around the same time. Yeah. What what got you into acting? Acting. Um, so whenever I was like 11 years old, I was obsessed with Disney Channel and Nickelodeon. And yep. specifically, I was really attached to Wizards of Waverly Place with Selena Gomez. Um, yeah. And all the other girls like Demi Lovato, Miley Cyrus, and then on uh, Nickelodeon, Victoria Justice and Ariana Grande. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I very much honed in on Selena Gomez more than the others. And I was like, Selena looks like she's having so much fun. Uh, she's from Texas. She's Hispanic. I'm Hispanic. Uh, we both have brown hair. She has brown eyes. I have brown eyes. I could do that. I could do that. And I want to have as much fun as she's doing. So I'm, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and that yeah. was literally my 11 year old logic. And the dream spiraled from there and it's not gone away since. <laughs> mm, that's so cool. If, um, I mean, it, what, when you're, when you're acting with a partner, do you guys, do you feel that like, it helps to communicate with them beforehand, like about about their style, their strategy. How was it for you on Beast Morphers? And did you have have you have you grown from that experience, or did you do you feel like you were prepared 
to be in that experience more. I was, I was definitely prepared um, with previous projects before that experience. Um, a lot of times I just kind of get to know um, the person as an individual and it's just like asking questions like, what's your style like? Do you like rehearsing beforehand? Do you not? Um, just what do you like doing? Um, and it just became really natural uh, of a process as we continued for nine months. And it just became one of those things we just didn't have to think about. Like I worked with Colby Strong, who's Blaze, um, right. more than anybody. And it was mm -hmm. just one of the things where we'd show up on set and normally we'd just goof off more than anything. And then whenever yeah. we, everyone would be like, okay, action, we would just go into our zone and we were completely unbreakable. Um, mm -hmm. So that was That's awesome. <laughs> Did, um, I know that your character on Beast, I don't know if this is going to get into like, like any kind of spoilery territories. Uh, you can I'll, let I'll see if it does. I'll see if it does. Okay, um, I'll, I'll try to keep away from any like potentials, <laughs> but I'll, you know, just let me know if I'm if I'm just, crossing the line. You can totally ask any questions. It's just going to be a matter of can I answer. Got it. Okay, <laughs> so then um, I will say I think my favorite character is Roxy, and it's because I think it's because the character is written in a way that it's so interconnected, and there's so much. Like right out of the front, right out of the first episode, there's so many, um, I, I guess there's so much potential, right? And yeah. there's like, there's, there's so much like wonder as to what, what's happening, what, how can we fix it? When is it going to get fixed? Is it going to get fixed? You know, right. like, and she starts in a place that you actually, you're rooting for her, you know, mm -hmm. and like in the very beginning. And then you yeah. come to find out by the end of that first episode, what the problem was that started that drama and <laughs> right. you know like with the relationships that are there there's there's lots of like t complex relationships yeah. that are in in play not just I, and i don't think i'm i hope i'm not overstepping any boundaries here but with um you know uh jazz meat yeah jazz his, yeah. you know his character um he is you know there's supposed to be a thing right and like it opens with that like little twinkle of a promise and right. it's like no we can't i said i i said we can't and they're like no but you said and he's like no yeah. we can't do it <laughs> there's the back and forth and then it 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 gets going and then you find out it's against the ranger code right huge and then by and then by the end of the episode you realize it's not just against the rules it's against his mom's rules yeah. you know it's like yeah. it's like it's double, you know, that's why it's he was so probably big. not, otherwise you think he might be willing to break the rules, but it's so much deeper than just yeah. that. Oh, yeah. And so like, that was one of the things that like really grabbed me towards the show was in the first episode, there's so many of those multi-tiered relationships right. that, that like drive the story, they drive the characters, they give you a really solid and twisting arc for everybody. Right. And it's just like, man, like, I'm still waiting at episode nine to see like what's going to happen with Roxy, like what's going to happen with Jazz, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh no, you're loading. Oh, there, uh, you're back. You're back. Yeah, sorry. I I think one of us was having an internet issue. It could have been me. Um, can you say that last part again? Oh, wait. Hold Come up on one second. Minute. I think it's cutting out a little bit. Oh. Give it one second. Hopefully, it'll pick back up. All right. I can see you now. Can you see me? I can see you just fine now. Okay. All right. Awesome. So, sorry again. Can you rewind it back to that, um, that yeah. last point? Yeah, and uh, it's it's so incredibly well written, and um, like you said, all the different layers with the characters is it's so well done, and I think it's gonna keep people like constantly guessing of what's gonna happen next, and yeah, they've they've done a really good job with that. Yeah, 
And that gives me so much hope for, like, not just this season of, of Beast Morphers, but next season of Beast Morphers, and also more, like, m more shows to come. You know, whatever the next series is going to be, whatever the next... Because obviously, Nick, like you mentioned before, their their concern is not just for little kids, but having a quality of story that is good enough that the parents and the siblings and the, everyone's going to want to watch it with them. Everyone. It, it holds to the innocence and then the integrity of the original Power Rangers, but it amps up the quality of not only the fight scenes, the CGI, the story writing, the character arcs, it's, all of it. It's really, really well done. And I think we all are very proud of what has been put out there um, mm. because it's something that people are like, oh my gosh, this is this is good. So it, it feels good to be a part of something that's being so positively reacted to. Yeah, totally. I'm I'm just like, I, I really am like blown away as a fan. I'm like, dang, this is like, this is sick. I can get back it's into watching. I can get back into watching Nick again. You know, like I don't want, I didn't watch Nick right? before. Right? Yeah. Now I'm over right. here. Like I'm downloading the apps and stuff. I'm like, dude, heck yeah. Like, I gotta get it. I gotta get yeah. it. I need more. Release the whole thing, you know, like Netflix right? style. Just drop it out. Exactly. And it's like in the States, a huge, like, hiatus right now. And we're like, yeah. we're done. We're done with it. Like, come back. Mm hmm so, Yeah. And overseas. Are, are you guys, have you already filmed season two? Yes. We filmed season one and season two back to back. Okay. So that's like Avengers. we in New Zealand for nine months straight. With the exception Dude. of coming back for Christmas to see family at that point. But we literally back to back. It was Dude, oh my gosh. So intense. It was amazing. I, I'm so I'm so jealous. That's so cool. New Zealand New Zealand is on my bucket list of places I want to visit. You have to go. Yeah. You have to go if you ever get a chance. It is like walking around in a virtual reality video game. It's you how, how is this real? It's so stunning. Yeah. So beautiful. I I was blown away as a as a younger man to find out that ninety percent of the shots in Lord of the Rings and even The Hobbit were were just shot with a camera. Like they weren't they weren't yeah. in CGI. I was like, What? Yeah. This is real? Yeah. Oh it, it's real and you're like, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> like you're standing there, you're like, no. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I'm really, I'm really excited for you that you got to have that experience. Thank you. And um, super jealous, admittedly. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to ask a couple of general questions so that everyone could get to know you, cool. and then we'll get a little bit back more into the Kate Bishop campaign, and then maybe follow up at the end with some more Beast Morphers stuff, and then whatever what it is that you're actively pursuing right now. Uh, yeah, go for it. Absolutely, let's do it. Okay, first off. Where are you from? I am from Austin, Texas, originally. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Did how, and so you were there from birth until? Yeah, birth until we moved out to LA for the business. Nice, okay. Was that, you said you started acting around 11, was it around that time? Oh, okay, so I, my dream started around uh, whenever I was 11. And okay. it took me about two years of begging my parents for them to take it seriously. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll bet. So whenever I was 13 years old, my mom was like, okay, let's go out to LA. Let's try out an audition and see if this is something you really want to do. And um, we flew out to LA. It was an audition for like a little dancing role in a Hollywood musical. And mm -hmm. I ended up booking my first audition ever. And I lived nice. in LA for two months for this um, production. And it was like, it completely changed my life. It completely sold my parents that okay, she can do this. Um, so we went back to Texas for a year, regrouped, and then moved. Awesome. That's so cool. It, that's really fortunate you were able to, like, find that, find a role and, and own it at such a young yes. age. First time, you know, you just jump in and boom, got the role. That's awesome. It was so crazy. Like, I, I look back on it, like, how did I manage that? Like, that shouldn't have happened. How? <laughs> And yeah, it, it was such a it was such a blessing. It was such a gift, and I I'm forever thankful for that experience. And um, it was amazing. Yeah, totally. And you mentioned that you were doing dance. Is that was that one of your hobbies at the time? And is that something yeah. that you still do? 
Um, yeah, I, growing up, uh, I was always dancing. I always did dance recitals. I always did uh, performances um, and booking this uh, musical kind of got it, got me into it professionally for a little while. Um, mm -hmm. And dance will always be a huge part of me. I still dance like for fun on my own. Um, but right. I, now I really started focusing on the martial arts and the stunts. Um, yeah. Because more than anything, like, I, I kind of sat down with myself and going, okay, dance films, action films, there's way more. And that's what I want to do more of anyway. So I started just training that way more. Um, but right. I, I have not completely X that out of my life. I, I love it. And I want to continue pursuing it as like for the rest of my life because I love it. But yeah, right. that's more of a hobby now. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of how I got my start. Okay. And that makes sense. I mean, it's, it's about it's about like where's my career going? What am I focusing on now? And obviously you love dance, but another form of movement, physical movement that you can right. train, get involved with, yes. martial exactly. arts, stunts, that kind of thing. And in a way, it's kind of a, a dance itself um, mm -hmm. because it's a lot of choreography. It's a lot of choreography. It's a lot of memorization, and it's a lot of body control. Um, yeah. Because when it comes to stunts, is you're not actually hitting anybody. Yes, you'll make contacts to their bodies, but you're not punching somebody. It's a lot of yeah. control, so you don't punch somebody. And having right. that background of learning how to control my body really helped me in this aspect, this world. So right, it ended up working it, out well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's more the art of creating a visual fight rather than actually fighting. Right. Yeah, and that's. That's what that's what makes the magic happen. That's what Absolutely. that's what all good films have. <laughs> and when and when like stunt guys they say, "Okay, you're gonna actually hit me on this," and I'm like, "No, no please don't make me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I love that. I've done a I've done a couple of like when I first came out of high school, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I didn't really want to go to college. That wasn't for me. And I was thinking, you know, what do I want to do? I did some acting. And um, I was I did I went to acting school. I took some classes, and I did like a couple of commercials and a music video. But in a music video, there was some stunt work that we had to do, and they ended up cutting out all the good stuff and just left it with a, a chase scene. But we we did some like fight stuff where I had to, I had to tackle someone, take them down, and, yeah. and then like hold their arm and you know like twist it and everything. Uh -huh. And uh, <laughs> that that kind of stuff is so fun. It's, it's so, so much, much fun. fun. It's so addicting. And it, you're just like, I can't get enough of this. So it, like, I know why so many stunt guys are like, oh, I just hurt myself the other day, but I'm back here training. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, my it's, ankle's really jacked up, but it's fine. I'm going to go flip again. Wait, you want to see me do it? Like, yeah, they're amazing I, people. I, I knew a guy, actually, I still know him, but I haven't trained with him in a while, but he, he's amazing. He's a, um, he's a, a younger dude. I think he's about 20 now. Mm -hmm. And he's um, he's world class in gi jiu jitsu. Oh wow! And he's an incredible, like, um, I guess you'd call it. He doesn't really do tricking, tricking, but he's yeah. amazing at tricks. Right. So, you know, he's not he's not a competitive tricker or anything. But right. holy cow! Like that guy could just be standing, and he'll he'll do a double. Uh, it's a a backflip, but with two twists. Yep. Uh -huh. So a back, uh, what is that? It's oh, I forget. Not three sixty, seven twenty. Back seven twenty. Yeah. yeah. So um, I suck at math off the top of my head. <laughs> I suck at math in general, so you're fine. <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, so we we've talked about your hobbies a little bit. Talked about how you got into acting. Um, what and then that? What was your first performance? You said that you had done a dancing role. Was that yeah. something that? Was that um, your first performance, was, what you would... Yeah, I would say that was my first um, performance in the industry, like, professionally. Um, okay. But I had done, like, dance recitals back home and stuff where, you know, you go out on stage and you show your parents what you've learned the whole school year. Um, yep. But it had it been, like, that in school plays um, before then. So I would technically say that that play, that production musical, was really my first thing. Was it like Hamlet or something, or Romeo and Juliet? Or <laughs> actually, no. It was um, it was called a Snow White Christmas. And okay. It was like a 
it was the classic Snow White story, but they per- put modern songs into it. So there mm-hmm. was like thriller, firework, um, and some other really fun stuff that was in the, the yeah, it was awesome. That, that sounds super cool. And so you had a singing role there. Do you sing? Um, I actually didn't sing. I, it was just a dancing role. Um, oh, okay. All right. But as of singing goes, I, I think I have something, but I've never really trained it just yet. So okay. if I do, um, I think it'll be a surprise for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure everyone's now, now that we've addressed that, everyone's going to want to hear you sing for sure. But we can save that for another time. We'll save that for another time. I don't want to We'll save that for another time. Yeah, we'll, we'll market that one differently. <laughs> Later. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot here. We, um, uh, okay, so what was the first superhero movie or TV show that you remember seeing? Superhero. Oh, yeah. Okay, I know. Um, my dad showed me, like, the original Batmans. Um, yeah. With, like, the shark spray repellent. Nice, Yeah. <laughs> That, that was the Adam West. Yeah, hey, get me, fetch me the shark repellent spray. <laughs> Dude, that and was the best. Shark, it's the best thing I've ever seen. It's so funny. It's so great. It's just a, it's just a dummy puppet on a hook. They're just hanging it. And it it's was- so, so great. I loved watching those. My, for me, it was, it was. Uh, my dad was showing me reruns of The Incredible Hulk with Lou Frigno and Bill Bixby. Oh, that's so cool. That one was, dude, it changed my life. <laughs> so great. Oh man, I think I've seen those, but it's been such a long time. Like, I don't remember like anything that's happened. I have a horrible memory with what happens in films. Like people will be like, do you remember that part? I'm like, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, that happens to me more often than people would imagine. Um, I remember a lot of a lot of comic book junk, and that's usually what people know me for. But it's um, but at the same time, you know, no one no one's got a perfect memory. I usually yeah. fail where, when it comes to names or no, or like numbers or dates, like those wow. types of that type of information usually like flat flies out of my head immediately. Yeah. But I can remember like how it looked, how it sounded, generally what they say. You know, those types of things stick in my head pretty good. Absolutely. Like, I'm probably going to have to read, like, all of Kate Bishop's comments, like, two to three times more. Um, yeah. Because, like, now I, I understand her character. I know everything about her. It's just getting everything just, like, stuck in and permanently in my brain. Um, yeah. Because Becoming the character, essentially. Exactly. Exactly. And, oh. It's, it's entertaining, so it doesn't suck at all. Yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's cool because there's there's so many good like there's so many good stories that are hinged around characters we're now familiar with. Like, not a lot of people knew about Hawkeye before Thor back right. in what was that two thousand and nine or ten or something or eleven? Something like that. Yeah, it was around then. Back then, almost no one knew who he was, and then you know, once once people like Screen Rant start getting a hold of of those stories, they start blasting out these articles about who was the guy shooting the arrows in the in the thing above yeah, the yeah. you know the shield base yeah. or whatever and um you know it's it's really it's really interesting but with kate bishop her her character is so it's so it's so complex but enjoyable you know she's got a lot of dark history really but dark yeah but at the same time like like peter parker you know he's he's birthed from tragedy like batman but he he doesn't follow the same path as batman it's for him he he uses that humor to kind of bring light into his darkened situation. And that's kind of what Kate Bishop does. Yeah. She's very chipper, very upbeat, very, you know, like happy, friendly. And, yeah. you know, she she's hardened at, you know, da- deep down, like she's a savage. But she's also, you know, she's very fun and relatable and enjoyable. Right. I think she kind of does something that I sometimes do in my personal life, which is like, if something's getting you down, like sometimes I'll have a bad habit of just suppressing it and then just being my happy self and going on and just ignoring it. And I think she does the same thing of like, she just like, Mm-mm, I'm not going to deal with that. No, I'm going to, I'd much rather go make fun of Clint right now than to think about my dad. And, right. and then when she gets like those personal attacks in, it, it really stings for her. Mm-hmm. Really stings. Yeah, for sure. And that I, I think that's something that when when I've watched Beast Morphers, 
And then I saw your performance as Roxy. It felt, it, to me, it felt very congruent with how Kate Bishop is in the books. Because oh. Roxy has, and I, again, I'm not trying to spoil stuff, but, <laughs> but you know, Roxy, the, the Roxy that we see for most of the show mm -hmm. is the Avatar. Right. Right. I don't have to explain what that means, but basically bad. Bad. <laughs> but she's, she's bad by the nature of what that Roxy is. Right. And she's got all the memories of the other Roxy mm -hmm. who is inherently good. Right. And so it's, you know, like with, with Kate Bishop, you know, she has that struggle. She has the pain. She's been, you know, abused and hurt and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's deep down. And on the surface, you never see, you don't, well, not never, but you rarely see that. She tries to present herself in a way that's yeah. pleasant and enjoyable and fun. And Roxy, when you're, especially, I like the first episode. I like the second episode. Roxy, what's it called? Roxy's plan, plan or revenge or something. The second episode, I think it is. Oh, um, my, I don't, I honestly can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, they probably named it after you guys were were done. But but they nevertheless, when when you're there at that like fountain or whatever oh, talking about yeah. Valentine's Day. Yes. And you know, like she this is again, it's the Avatar, so it's not really the Roxy, but it's all of her memories are just like copied. It's like here, drag oh, and drop these files. She she can just turn it on, so she can totally manipulate what she, she does, Robbie. Um, yeah. And oh, She's, she's, mm. Yeah, she's not and it's, nice. <laughs> it's so fun to watch her that way because it's it's like you're seeing evil incarnate, but it's it's got a chipper face. Yep. You know, it's got a chi it's got that like like amazing like like hey, you know, like it's so good to see you. This is where we fell in love. Don't you remember that? Blah blah. <laughs> and then like, but then she turns on him, and it's like what? You know, like oh my gosh. But Kate Bishop kind of has that duality to her character where there is that down below. There is that darkness yeah. oh, that yeah. is there. She has, I think she has two things, like two different fires going. It's yeah. the fire of I got to prove myself and I'm super determined and motivated to do so. And there's a mm -hmm. lot of recklessness there. Um, and of course the charm, but there's yeah. that deep burning fire that hurts and it's from all of her personal life. Um, mm -hmm. and they're coexisting and sometimes they mesh and that causes a lot of problems. Right. And that, that's, I think what is so, I guess, entrancing about the character, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. there's a lot of snake analogies you could make here, but well, like, that's exactly how I describe Roxy to people. She's a snake. She, that's like, oh, yeah? literally <laughs> like, no, I'm not even kidding. Like I describe her as like, she slithers and she, you never know what she's up to and she could strike at any point. I literally say that all the time to people. That's so I, crazy I was, that you said that. Whoa. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I was I was thinking because of like uh, Evox, you know, like he is that evil that possessed her. Yeah. And so, so it's like, be a snake. yeah. Right. And so like in that same way, I, I felt when when that was supposed to be the character, when the avatar is really evil underneath, it's the virus. That's inhabiting base. You could make the argument. Oh, it's the body. It's not really. She's in the coma, but right. but you know what I mean. Like it's like it's Roxy with the virus, and you see that snake creeping up, and then just getting. You know, it's like oh my gosh, so it's much crazy. fun to watch. You did a um, you did a really good job. Thank with that, you with so that much. It was just so much fun. I, it was. It just the the levels that I got to do. I was like, this is such a gift. I'm having so much fun with it. It was yeah, cool. man. Uh, it so so cool. Um, oh, I wanted to ask. So besides Beast Morphers, um, what what would you say is your favorite Power Rangers series? RPM. RPM. Yeah. Heck yeah. Down, RPM is my favorite. Um, mm -hmm. It was just darker than the others and i really liked that it was yeah so fun. i i really i feel like when when hasbro picked up um power rangers they basically said let's take a look at all of the best series and yeah. see what worked for those that yeah. were neglected in the others you know and they took yes. they took the darker elements of rpm they took um like they uh for uh what's it called again time force they took that yeah. father-son relationship that was there that really helped Jason bounce character 
-hmm. And they, they took that and they applied it right over to um, uh, Devin. You know, uh, I'm forgetting the actors. Is it Rory? Rory yeah, Rory? Rory, Rory Travis. Okay, yeah. But he, him and his father, there's a, there's a yes. slightly dysfunctional father figure that, but he's right a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, he's looking out for his best interest. So they took that idea, they applied it, but they tweaked it to make it so that the father figure is still, he's still a wise figure. He's still a yeah. good guy and still loves his son. Right. He's and, just trying to do what's best for him. And it just, the ideas just don't mesh. And it's like, oh, you guys are both trying to do so good. But, oh, yeah. 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 And it's, and that, that was a beautiful thing. So many shows I feel have gotten the father son relationship wrong. Yeah. And like where they, they demonize the father. But in this right. case, they right. kick off the first episode. And who's the one voice of reason in the show saying, I'm pretty sure this is going to end badly, guys. And it's it's him. It's the father. And exactly what he was warning everyone, including his son, about that an evil is going to come through and, yeah. and try to use this the same way everyone else has in the past. Absolutely. They did. And he was right. And he so, was right. He was right. Yeah. Should and he loves his there. son. He loves his son, too. And that's, you know, he's proud of his son. He wants to be proud of his son. But just based on the information that is withheld from him and what he doesn't know about his yeah. son... You know, obviously, there's like he's trying to be corrective and help his son to succeed. He doesn't know his son succeeding. Yeah. It's you know, and it's because of the secrets and stuff. But it's, oh, it's yeah, crazy. it's wild. It's perfect. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> I love that so much. Um, oh, and uh, I wanted to ask. So you mentioned um, Selena Gomez being a a um, inspiration. Mm hmm. Are there are there any inspirations now nowadays that you see for your acting career oh, that yeah. you kind of want to emulate or be like, or they just pump you up? Hey, I want to be just like that. Or um, it's it's been a mixture of a lot of people recently. Um, over the years, yes, Selena Gomez, um, Scarlett Johansson has been a major one for me. Um, specifically mm -hmm. her Black Widow character, I'm just like. I, that's you got the jackpot. Okay. Like that, yeah. It's just uh, gold. Uh, yeah. Gold. Um, I love her. Natalie Portman. Um, mm -hmm. I love Kate Blanchett like crazy. She yeah. Is all, her acting, like, she does so many things. Uh, yeah. It's unbelievable. She's like never typecasted. You never know what she's going to do next. And I, I absolutely mm -hmm. love that. Um, yeah. Yeah. She's got crazy range. So good. Emily Blunt. Um, yeah. The big one for me, too. Uh, her performance in A Quiet Place. I'm, I'm still holding a grudge against the Oscars. I'm like, okay, we need to have a talk. <laughs> like, yeah. why wasn't she nominated? I'm pissed. It was yeah, like, phenomenal. what? It, that, that, that was so confusing to me, too, because she was freaking crazy good in that movie. One take. <laughs> that was one take. And she sat up after that scene in the tub and was like, so what's for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, like, everyone, including John Krasinski, was like... <laughs> Dude, she, she, she definitely deserves more. She, she deserves more out of her career, like, what more recognition she needs. Yeah, like, she nice. deserved an Oscar for that. For, obviously, there was some other good contenders, I know. Right. But, Bias as heck, she's freaking awesome. She's amazing. I actually saw her Mary Poppins and A Quiet Place in the same day, and I was like, okay, I think you're my favorite right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh. She's, so, she's so cool. So good. And someone that I think is is in that caliber of actress that I, I really appreciate um, would for me would be um, Elizabeth Banks. I really like Ooh, her. Yes, she's so good. Her, Elizabeth Banks, and um, uh, Emily Blunt are are two of the top uh, contenders to play um, Susan Storm from the Fantastic Four. Yes. We do a lot yes. of fan casting on this channel. <laughs> what? We do a lot of fan casting on right. this channel. Is it, and so, um, like, is it Emily Blunt um, and uh, her husband, John Krasinski, for the Fantastic Four, right? Yeah, and I think that's a great idea. I think it's, I think it's awesome. I actually, um, I was interviewed by um, someone over the weekend, and they said that they literally asked John Krasinski in person, like, would you be down for this? And he was like, yes. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, he. I know he said it before. Um, there's a lot of a lot of people uh, at first were a little bit opposed to the idea of John doing it because, I mean, I know he's. I think he's either in his upper thirties or maybe forty at this point. Yeah, but he, is. he looks really young, and Reed is usually an older person. Yeah. So, but like, I think that's still good because you can just say he's older. You. It's not that. Yeah. You it's are, not that. It's not that far. Whenever you're working with adults, you can easily stretch that. Easily. Yeah. And there's makeup. There's prosthetics. I mean, movie right. magic can happen. I think yeah. 100. He'd be perfect for it. Right. And it's not like we haven't seen Marvel take Sam Jackson from his 60s back down to his 30s or 20s even. You right. Know? Like it's yeah. I, come on. Like. Don't even go there with me. Like it could happen. Oh, yeah. Could totally or even happen. even more recently with uh, in in Endgame, not to give too much away, but the aging effect they did at towards the end. Yeah. With one Steve Rogers. I mean, that was a big that difference. Was ridiculous, ridiculous. Hold on, I'm gonna plug in my phone real quick because it's like okay. trying to die. Okay. Mm -hmm. No worries. All right, we're gonna see if it stays. Stay. Stay. Okay, I think it's gonna stay. Perfect. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, and so uh, a couple more get to know yous, and then we'll move on to the next section. Um, let's see. When you have a five minute break or a quick break on on set, um, when you're in between takes or something like that, what's your go to like time spend? What do you do to like kill time or just or or what do you do between shots um it's usually a bunch of different things um i'll go get water i'll go get a snack real quick um i sometimes will check my emails i try to stay off of social media a good bit during the day um but sometimes right. if there's something happening like um oh we have like a new episode coming out or we got press that we got to take care of i'll be on monitoring that but mm -hmm. most of the time it's just goofing off with the crew and the cast um, yeah. Just talking with everybody, asking them, "Hey, how was your day? How was your weekend? What did you do?" Um, mm -hmm. And then it, yeah, it's just bonding time. I, it's the best thing to bond with your crew and your cast because they just become your family, and yeah, uh, it's it's the most amazing connections. It's yeah, awesome. that's super tight. I mean, with with TV, you get more opportunity, I think, for those long term relationships to build than if you're in a movie because you're you might be on set at, for less time together, um, right? Potentially, potentially. But like, yeah, in I the, did have a the, good story though from a film that I did a, a couple of years ago that's going to be released this year. Um, I met my best friend on that set, and we became like best friends in like a week. And we were filming for only three weeks. Dude, that's awesome. It was crazy. Make a best friend. That's so cool when you just, you, you meet someone out of nowhere and you just immediately have that connection, that spark. It was the most, like we were talking about it the other day, like, like that was just weird. Like we were calling each other best friend in like a week. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now she's out here with me um, and we're both pursuing the acting thing together and it's amazing. So that's like... That's kind of what happened with um, me and Ryan from Nerdy Blurb TV. Is oh, wow. He, he runs the YouTube channel, and he's also got, um, you know, the, the social media out here. He's out here all the time. He, me and him hit it off. Like, in, he, he reached out to me because of a Spider-Man Homecoming video, theory video that I made. Oh, and wow. he was, like, blown away. And I, I predicted, like, a lot of things in that, in that video, some of which came to pass in, like, close – close to immediately, like things that were going to come soon or in far from home. And some of them now we know are happening long term. Um, and he was just like, dude, this guy's crazy. He's got theories. And I was like, dude, no way. My editing was trash. I had no skills whatsoever. I just started. And it was like, it was the most crude video you could ever, like my phone was just like over here on a desk with a book holding it up. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, and then I was over on the other side and just like talking from the other side of the room. There's no, there's like no lights. It was awful, dude. But, uh, but he, he found me and then we started talking after that. And it just immediately we realized like, wow, you know, like we, we have a lot of the same goals, ideas, um, inspirations, even, yeah. um, very like-minded. Um, he's way better at what he does than I am, but 
he's like, you know, he's also all about community. And that's where like me and yeah. him have been really trying to grow the, the fan communities around the content that people like yourself are helping to create. Yeah, that's so super cool um, that you guys met that way. It's so sweet. Aww. Yeah. It's uh it's almost like it was fate or destiny. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So uh shout out to your best friend and um yep. we have uh <laughs> one question in this segment. Um who is uh second sorry, my phone was ringing. Um who's the funniest person on the cast, if you had to pick one? In real yeah. life. I oh my gosh, they are the all collectively together some of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. That is such a hard question. Funniest person on the cast. Oh my gosh, um, I would say it'd be kind of a tie between uh, three people, and I know it's like not one, but together they're the funniest. Oh my gosh, I would say Colby is one of my the funniest person to me. One just because I work with him every single day. Um, Colby. Colby and then Christina and Jackie. Jackie's and she's the goofiest person I've ever met. Oh my goodness, she has energy like boundless energy. Like she is the definition of a bunny rabbit. Like it's perfect casting, honestly. Um, and then Christina, awesome. she just kind of knocks you out with these one-liners that are, <laughs> and she she's just like, I will be at you and in your face in the like the cutest possible way. I oh my gosh, I adore them so much. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. I mean, I, I was probably going to, I was probably going to guess like, um, uh, maybe Rory to me, he seemed like he would have been funny, but that's he's a really, really interesting really that you picked Jackie. Yeah, he is really funny, but he's also a really chill and mellow guy too. Like he's, mm -hmm. he's kind of known for just napping on set. Like he can nap anywhere at any time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great skill to have, especially if you're. Waking up at like, I don't know, whatever, like four or three or something, like yep. super early. Because you wake up really early for sets, don't you? Yeah, my average wake up time was 4 a.m. Dude, that's awesome. Well, we actually have to hit a break really quick. Um, okay. Instagram Live is going to shut us off in 16 seconds. But we're going to do another live to everyone who's watching. Just hang on for a second. Give us one minute. We'll come right back and finish out the session, okay? Perfect. Sounds good. All right, let's, let's take a break. I'll end it, and then I'll add you back in a new one. Perfect. Hey, Leanna. Hi. We are back. So uh, Instagram Live just limits us to, to a certain amount of time. So I just wanted to make sure we um, got to those Kate Bishop questions and the Beast Morpher right. questions. And we can go through this a little quicker. I know that, you know, we had a, a time agreement, so I don't want to abuse that no, too much. I, I'm all good. I, this is, we're, we're good. Don't worry about it. We're good. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So, um, Let's go ahead and jump right in. We've already got 25 people on, on this live, so that's really fast. Um, excellent. That was a smooth transition. So um, first question about Kate Bishop. What was the first time that you learned about the character Kate Bishop? Oh, my gosh. Um, I had heard about her, like, kind of on and off um, a couple times through the past couple of years. Um, but a few. it was a few months ago where I was doing research on, like, ooh, what are the like teenage Marvel superheroes that are females that I could potentially like play one day, like just dreaming out loud and thinking out loud. Um, right. And I came across Kate Bishop and it was in June uh, that I had discovered. I'm like, okay, they're actually making a show about this. Um, mm -hmm. And then I was like, got really inspired and I did like a selfie that was really close um, looking to her and I did a side by side and my friend looked at them. They're like, dude, you have to post that. You have yeah. to post that. And I did. And that's kind of where it all started with the whole campaign. Um, mm -hmm. so people saw it and were like, okay, yeah, yes, yeah. And so everything blew up from there. And then two weeks after that one post, I was like, I'm on board. Let's actually social media campaign this. And then a couple weeks from then, that's when they actually announced the show publicly. Yeah, Crazy. dude, that's awesome. That's so cool. Um, with the uh, uh, with with if you were to get this this role, you know, you'd be playing the character. You obviously have a good understanding of her background at this point. Now that you've done some research, you, uh, I believe you said you've um, you bought like a bunch of her comics, and you know, all you and I, 
All of them? Dude, Savage, them. that's amazing. All of them, and I'm waiting on a couple, I think I'm waiting on the last couple to get in. Um, I have become friends with a local comic book store owner, and yeah. uh, he has been hooking me up. Um, and so I think I have like the last couple that are getting in, and I think those are with the Fraction series. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And so I read, yeah, I actually read two of the Fraction series today. I was like, oh my god, this is so good. That's um, so awesome. What what kind of what kind of um, person it, viewer is going to love this character? So you you and I have related to this character in different ways, but what from your perspective, what kind of person do you think? will be drawn to Kate Bishop? I think anybody who has uh, family issues or has gone mm -hmm. through family troubles in their past. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty much everybody uh, yep. because it, it's such a human thing to go through. And that's right. what I love about Kate is that she's going through such genuine human problems. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's gonna be really fascinating to see what they do with her on the show. And I think just as a fan of hers and say I don't get casted as something completely different, I just want to know how they do it because there's so much depth and meat and it's just so juicy that they can, they have so much to play with. And uh, the yeah. family problems and the, their, her dad being like a villain, is it, that is such good writing. So yeah. Good writing. It, it, it really is. It's so, it's so, it's so relatable on so many okay. levels. And it's, you can just, you can connect so well. I compare her to more of a female Spider-Man than probably any other character. Um, yes, absolutely. Because it's, the, it's that family, that family issue, that family draw. Spider-Man doesn't have a, a, a villainous family member, but Miles Morales does, you know, and right. you have like, there's, there's so many like, um, like heart issues, brokenness wow. that's down below, but she manages to keep her spirits up. And that's something that is so un enjoyable about the character. Yeah, it's, she, she's a fighter. She is 100% she is um, at a disadvantage when it comes to um, strength, powers. I mean, she just has a bow and arrow in her right. wits. And she has to somehow keep up with people who have power and superhuman strength and all this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And also, she has to find a way to overcome her mental and emotional battles. Um, right. She, to me, is the most human person out of anybody in the Young Avengers, in my opinion. Yeah. No, for sure. I, I agree. I think that she she is not just because she doesn't have powers, but she's the most grounded because of her relatability. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yes. And I, to translate that now. How is this character, how is Kate Bishop like yourself? And how is she different? Um, actually, finding the differences might be a little bit hard. Um, mm -hmm. Because I, I'm actually very similar. Um, I mean, I think she's a little bit more blunt than I am. Uh, yeah. She just kind of says what she thinks. Um, I have more of a filter. I think that's a difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's, I would say, more reckless than I am. Mm -hmm. um, but we both have that burning fire of we want to prove ourselves. Yeah. We want a chance. And I, I've kind of been comparing it like we're both underdogs. Like, I don't have a lot of credits. I don't have millions of followers. Yet, I 100% believe that I could play this part. And that's why yeah. I can pick. And right. she 100% believes that she can be Avenger. And that's why she works so hard. Mm -hmm. and so that's why we're similar. And that's why I see so much of myself in her. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, I totally, I see that as well. You know, that's something that like from, from someone that doesn't have everything. I mean, obviously she was born into a wealthy family, but not Very, but wealth yeah. isn't something that necessarily keeps you safe at night. Wealth isn't something that necessarily gives you some, that kind of confidence. Whereas when yeah, she, or happiness, when, yeah. or happiness, but yeah, like, you know, like, lonely. Yeah. With with her sister's wedding and, and the, the tragedy that happened there, it's something that like you couldn't have you couldn't have prepared for that with dollars. No. This was something that was basically it was an Avengers level threat and she needed to right. step up and she was saying, If I was trained, if I had if I had prepared myself, I could have been 
the one to stop this from happening. And she takes that burden upon herself and works like a dog to get to that point to the degree that she eventually stands up to Captain America and says, no, this is on you. You saw us. A hero is in the yeah. heart. We need to, you know, and yeah. you should have seen that in us, knowing that we were never going to back down from doing what's right. So you should have prepared yeah. us for this. This is on you. And then that's Absolutely. when, he, you know, she brings that team together. So it's super sick. Yeah, and I kind of have the same mentality with, with myself. I'm like, you know, if you wait around for opportunities to happen, your dreams are never going to become true. So that's right. kind of why I, with not just this, I, I have created my own opportunities i have created my own auditions and own projects because i don't want to be just waiting for something to magically happen no yeah. i mean if i want something i'm gonna go get it and mm -hmm. regardless of I, if i actually do get kate or not at least i'll have every knowing that i did everything i could and i won't have any regrets right yeah and that's that's the same conviction that I see with Kate Bishop is if you do everything that you can, if you, if you do everything yeah. that you can to make yourself what you need to be, then it's no longer on you. Exactly. It's on cap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that pivotal moment. Right. Um, yeah. But that's super cool. So I wanted to ask, um, is it, is it easier for you to play the character, a character, or is it easier for you to be yourself on, on camera? It's a really good question. Um, it's, I would say, easiest for me to find a version of myself in somebody. So, okay. Kate, obviously, I see a lot of myself in her, but she has a lot of things that are different. Her snarkiness, she's blunt, like I said. She just speaks and is animated and takes things somewhat personally that shouldn't. Um, right. She whines and complains. Um, so, I would find myself in those moments and then right. of course that's when the acting comes in of okay that's not something i'd really do but i'm gonna play with it and see what happens yeah um, that's, that's more of a meisner acting. approach right i i definitely it's more of for me i really just try to implement personal experiences um and then mm -hmm. use imagination and creativity from there yeah that's really I would cool say it's nothing really too special I don't uh, do method acting or anything. I usually just kind of seclude myself and just put music in my ear and just focus. Okay. And what, is, that a, is that a specific style? When I did acting, um, I learned a style that was called Meisner. I don't know if that's universal or if that's something, but that's where you bring yourself yeah. to the role more as opposed yeah. to the method where you bring that role and you become that role completely. You become it. yeah. Abandoning your old self. <laughs> I'm going to sound like a terrible actor but i completely forgot i just kind of do what works best for me and yeah. it seems to be doing well so far for me um mm. and that's great that's miser or method i just yeah i'm just i'm just doing me man <laughs> no that's that's how it should be i mean if you if you can be adaptable that way and function either whatever whatever the situation calls for and whatever you can do the best that's the best obviously you know so awesome that's that's Great that you have that ability to adapt. Thank you. It's fun. It's it's so much fun. Yeah. And um, so what what if you could pick one thing about Kate Bishop, what's the one thing that you like about her the most? That's so hard. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like asking like a kid, what's your favorite candy? Um, right. <laughs> of all the candies. Okay, I think it's a tie, a tie. Sorry, it's hard to pick one. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a tie between her snarkiness and her hilarious commentary. Yeah. Um, both inner dialogue and <laughs> external um, mm -hmm. to just her human problems and how she deals with it. Just the, the right. meat of the story. Um, yeah. I think it's those two because it, uh, she's so good. Yeah. No, totally. There's there's so much to love about the character, but I think you're right. I mean, that's the same. And like, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but like, that's what I think I like about her in the way that she she presents herself, her quick wit, her banter, um, her snarky comments. That's very much in the in the ballpark of Spider-Man or a Deadpool right. or, you know, like any of the like the mouthy characters that mouth off a little bit. 
She doesn't yeah. have that kind of a filter as much. She just says what's on her mind. And people like that. People like to hear when people yeah. say what they're thinking. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's why I, a lot of people love her and I personally love her a lot. Yeah, totally. Now, the opposite question now is what do you not like or hate about the character Kate Bishop? Is there something that really irks you or gets under your skin? Or you, if you had to pick, what's the thing that you like the least about her? Um... I think it's the non-filter. It's like, hun, you don't need to whine about that. Like, stop complaining about that. Like, or and sometimes like she'll flaunt her money. I'm like, stop. Like, we get it. You're rich. Like, stop. And yeah, yeah. Like, those are the things I'm like. Okay, you're human. I can forgive you, but I'm just like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if she was like my friend, I'd be like, hey, you know, you do this thing. <laughs> You'd have to, like, sit her down and have a talk with her, like, we need to talk about you humility. Talk. Right. Yeah. And you're a great person and all, but there's always room for improvement. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, that's a good, that's an excellent point, yeah. It, and that kind of falls into the, into the, like, it's the same, it's two sides of the same coin. Because, like, you love her for her no filter, says whatever she's thinking. And then sometimes you don't appreciate like, what she says because she's thinking it. It's like, can you... Yeah. You want to yeah. slap her a little bit. Like, come on. Like... <laughs> right, exactly. And that's, that's an interesting point because it's what you love and hate about her. Right. It's one of the reasons why she gets punched a lot. <laughs> yeah. She's very punchable, isn't she? She, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, oh so, so then, from an acting standpoint, what do you think the biggest challenge will be for you taking on the role of Kate Bishop? That's a really good question. Um, dang. I think it, it's, when it comes to an acting point of view, I think I'll just be in my element. I'll just do the work that I've done for years with her. I think what's going to be the scariest aspect is being a part of marvel and the yeah. expectation that's attached to it but there's so many passionate fans that want it to be good want you to be good and there's going to be a lot of like oh then you better be good and, and i don't i don't like how you look they should have casted somebody else and it's just going to be so much pressure weight on your shoulders and that's i think going to be the hardest part to deal with right. but at the same time i just went through that with rangers I, oh yeah I just jumped into a, a huge franchise with a huge amount of expectation. Um, yeah. And so it's like, okay, I've, I've gone through this once. I can do it again. No problem. Totally. It's going to be a little bit more public and a little bit more bigger, but it's like, I, I've done it before. I can do it again. And I will have a lot of people behind me, my family, my friends to support me, my coaches. And I'm sure that on set, there's gonna be amazing people. And I, I think Jerry Mariner is also a really nice guy. And I think he would take whoever plays Kate under his wing and really help yeah. him out. So yeah, I totally. think if I do get it, it would, I would be in really good hands. And it would mm -hmm. just be my time to let everything go, not think about it, and just do what I feel like God put me on this earth to do. Right. I think that's a great answer. I mean, you know, to me, you don't seem like the kind of person that caves under pressure. It is hard. It's crazy being under the public eye. You know, right. even if it's like uh, at a school play or if it's, you know, like singing at church or if it's, you know, something as crazy or big as being a Power Ranger or in the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe, you know, like at any of those levels, you know, I think I think the path that that you've been on has taken you through enough enough of a grade that you're yeah. you're already able to, you know, like say, OK, this is the next step. I know how to get there and you can kind of yeah. work your way up to that. Next level of pressure and whatever. And, yeah, you know. Like, even if it's this, it's going to be something else because, like, I'm not going away <laughs> anytime soon. This is my dream film. is the love of my life. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing this forever. So. Yeah, right on. Awesome. And um, so besides your besides yourself, um, let me see. Uh, oh, no, I've got, uh, sorry, different question. Would you, how, how would you like to work with Jeremy Renner in this role? Like, I know there's a lot of, a lot of things to take on when you take on the role, but right. is there a, is there a way that you kind of like a, a, a dream vision for like, this is how we would work together kind of thing? 
Oh man. I mean, I hope it would be a really fun relationship. Um, yeah. And it's always nice when it's like a kind of a goofing off relationship in a way. Uh, of course, still being respectful on set, um, but it, it just kind of takes the pressure and it, it just relaxes you when there's laughs and smiles. Happening. So I, I'd hope that would be the relationship. But also, I would love to just sit down and talk to him for, and really get to know like how he works, his experience, what it's like to be in Marvel, any advice, any wisdom. Um, before really diving in like that would be one of the first things I asked and like I'm gonna have a list of people I would love to have coffee with so, yep. <laughs> um, no kidding and, and get to know everybody before I have to dive into all this so, yeah seriously yeah, that yeah. that is that is a good question I mean if you if you could pick three people from the Marvel Cinematic Universe right now to have coffee with who would they be Jeremy Renner Scarlett Johansson and Kevin Feige uh, Jeremy Renner, really obviously, nice. because of all of his knowledge when it comes to Hawkeye and um, playing the part and advice um, and, of course, how to work on one-on-one. -on -one. Scarlett mm -hmm. Johansson, what's it like to be a female in this universe that's so highly loved? How do you deal with that pressure? Uh, sometimes the creeps and just the, the press and all that. And then, of course, right. I can't stress Kevin Feige enough. I think yeah. he's an absolute genius. And he's the best. Who, He's unbelievable. And for someone who is creating a franchise, I want to know how he runs it. Yeah. I want to know how he does everything. And mm -hmm. I would just be like, can I pick your brain? Is there is there <laughs> little bits of things you can tell me without giving all of your knowledge away? Like, I just, I, I, yeah. <laughs> that That's a really prudent selection of actors and, and people in the Marvel Universe. For sure, Kevin Feige would have to be one for me because at the very least, one day I need to tell him like he is. With, and I'm sure he gets this on a daily basis. I'm sure. But he is the best producer in the history of production ever. Like there is no one, <laughs> there's no one out there that has done what he has done. I mean, oh. from, from X-Men all the way up till now, far from home. You know, like every single like movie, I mean, that he's been involved with specifically, namely the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right, the 22 right. films. He has it, not one flop, 22 films, many of them over a billion dollar film, a couple of them in the $2 billion range. And he, no one's done what he's done. He's the best in the world. If the Academy can't recognize that, I give up on the Academy. He is the Honestly. best freaking produ producer of all time. He, he um, is something else. And be like, can you give me like your business plan? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Can you write like, it out for me? And I can I just study this like it's college? Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Or can I be your coffee boy? You know, like I would be like, Kevin, can I just can you hire me to be your coffee boy and just hang around you from time to time? Like if I he, if I became Hawkeye, I would volunteer for that role also. Like yeah. I don't think somebody like walking around with the suit, like the bow in my shoulder, like Hey, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, no, I would, I would seriously be like, look, if you can give me and, you know, essentially my family, you know, like six, 7,000 bucks a month, I would be your coffee boy and I'd play the part, you know, for whatever the, the, you know, price or the, or the yeah. um, income is for that. But I would, you, you send me that. I won't go anywhere else. I'll be right here with your coffee every morning, every, every day. Morning. You want, you want water? I got you some water. You want some LaCroix? I got you LaCroix. You know what I mean? <laughs> You want some bubbly from Target or whatever? I got you, you know? <laughs> like, let's make this thing happen. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's a lot of fun. Um, so then also, um, if other than Kate Bishop, I yeah. mean, you said you had done some research about other roles you were possibly looking at and that kind of thing. If, if you know, maybe you were able to get an, uh, another role, Mm -hmm. As, you know, not Kate Bishop, but another one. Is there another one that you might have given some thought to? Um, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe specifically? Yes. Um, or, I mean, it doesn't have to be. You can, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, in the Cinematic Universe uh, of Marvel, I would say maybe Spider-Woman. Um, yeah. I know she's English, so I would have to work on the British accent. Right, um, Jessica Drew. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But... If we're doing other superheroes, um, I would say Raven in the DC universe. That would be so cool. I can totally see uh, that. I 100% see that. 
Yeah, just that. just like the the gray makeup or whatever, and then just kill it, dude. That'd be oh, so fun. Hovering, hovering, and casting spells. It would be great. Yeah, they both wear purple. Yeah, and that's my favorite color. So I would die either way. That totally works. I love that. Yeah, if, if DC, if the DC EU ever gets going with some sort of a live action Titans, other than the Titans they have on the streaming service, right. then absolutely right. love it. I think he'd be great for that role. Thank you. I I would die. That'd be so cool. Oh my gosh, that'd be that'd be awesome. So I think those are most of the questions that I had for your Kate Bishop um, campaign. Other than lastly, um, do you have any further plans that for the for the campaign? Do you have anything on the horizon um, that maybe we can allow people to be directed towards? Um, do you plan any other events? Or I, you? I always have things planned. Always. Yeah. That's the thing about being a writer. I'm always creative. I'm always creating things. Um, mm -hmm. It's a part of the reason why I stay up till like four in the morning is because I can't stop creating. My brain's like, we're going to be creative now. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I know for sure. Yeah, but I, I, I always have something planned. So I would say, get excited. And mm -hmm. um, just whenever I do post something, just spread the word and start tagging like crazy. Totally. And I, I will say like, you know, if any of you guys are all the all the people who are watching right now, follow her on Instagram. So you can stay up to date with all those things she's posting all the time, cool videos of the stunt training she's doing and, um, you know, other other things in that direction about Kate Bishop and some cool photoshops. But also, um, there's a couple of fan pages I found that are for Leanna for Kate Bishop. So if you if you search Whoa. Leanna for Kate Bishop, there's a couple of fan pages and they keep up to date on those things as well. Thank and they you. find people who are doing art for you and that kind of cool stuff. So lots of it's, ways to stay connected. It's unbelievable. And like, I have to thank everybody who's behind those fan pages. Like I, I don't Feel like i deserve your love and support and the fact that you are constantly helping me daily with this campaign like it makes my heart melt and so happy so thank you for everything i can't stress how thankful i am yeah and that's you know that's something that i i really appreciate about the community too is that they you know they they're so helpful they they cling to you they they follow you around like like a brother or a sister just like oh my gosh you know and it's, that's, that's really encouraging. It's, it's really, really wild. It's, and I like, so I will try to interact and be like, hi guys. And they're like, oh my gosh. I'm like, you're making my day. It's like, I'm making your day. It's just, oh, it's the best thing in the world. And I think there's a lot of love that is happening with this um, campaign. And it's, it's really beautiful. It's really cool. Yeah. And, and anyone who's out there that has like art skills or anything, if you guys want to get involved with that, you know, just I will post grab it on my story, please. I would love to see it. Yes, create something and use the hashtag Leanna F O R Kate Bishop. Yes. Yes, Leanna F O R Kate Bishop, and that's that. That's the official hashtag for the campaign. Um, and then also, uh, Power Rangers Beast Morpher questions before we get going. This is uh, super fun, super exciting. Um, what kind of, and I know we kind of touched on this towards the beginning of the interview, so I'll, you know, we don't have to go too long on these questions, but um, what sort of person is going to love Beast Morphers? Someone who likes a good show and action packed stuff, and also yeah. some crazy monsters here and there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's super lighthearted, it's something that you can watch whenever, literally, whenever. Uh, if you're kind of sick of something darker or super dramatic on TV, turn this on. It's going to make your day. Yeah, it really is. I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful that I started watching, even though I was skeptical, you know, being like an OG, yeah. like Ranger fan. Oh, you know, Hasbro, it's the new thing. Is it going to be cool? And I was totally super impressed with the, the production quality, the writing, the acting, the, you know, all of it was just so much fun. And I, I, Thank you. I can't wait for the next few episodes to come out and then season two. Me too. Oh my gosh, season two, guys. Oh yeah. my god. I'm hanging on every single episode. I want to ask you so many spoiler questions, but I know I you know. can't. I know, but here's the thing. It's like whenever everything does happen, let's talk. It's going to be great. It's going to be I so would, fun. I would freaking love to because that would be like the best thing ever. Um Oh, cool. And then uh, what, what was challenging about bringing this script to life? 
Um, I don't know. It, it just kind of honestly came really naturally. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know like, how to explain it. It's just that we got on, the, on set and it just everything clicked. I think at the very beginning, we didn't have a lot to work with. I didn't have um, as much backstory as some of the other characters to work with. So I right. had to really have, um, I brought a lot of my own creativity to it. And I had a lot of creative control to the character. So it was kind of on me to create Roxy. Um, both the versions that you saw in the, in the first episode, and then also the evil one. Um, yeah. And so it was like, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. And um, it just kind of happened, and I'm really pleased with the work that was put in. Yeah, and that, I think I think that really um, I didn't know that there was there was not that much backstory provided to you as an actress. Um, that's really cool because the way that it came out with your creative input was probably one of the most intriguing parts of the show for the for at least the first episode because it just it grabs you so hard when you see that relationship and then the, the, the forced break and the tear and then all of a sudden she's, you know, she's back. What's going to happen? That was like the grab moment for me. That was like, okay, this is like, I got to see what's happening here. You know, I got to follow this through. Yeah. And uh, among other things, among a lot of other things, but that was for me, that was the best, the best part. I love that so much. Um, and there was a lot of really good chemistry um, as well between uh, you and, and Jazz. So, like, that worked really nice, like, watching that. That was really cool. He's such a cool guy. And it was so funny because our relationship off screen was just us literally goofing off and him being like, ah! in my face. Um, and just, like, it was just the dorkiest interactions. And um, I think just of us having that really created what you guys saw. Um, so I was, I'm really thankful for that. It was so funny. Awesome. That's so cool. Um, with uh, And then I think this one may be uh, a no-brainer, but why did you want to be involved with this production? Um, well, it was at the time an amazing opportunity. And for someone who has always dreamed about being a part of anything action-related, it was like, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it I, I didn't really know it at the time, but, but the idea of being a part of a really cool franchise was super appealing. And then now that I'm in it, I'm like, this is more than a franchise. It's a family. And I, I can't believe that I'm here. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Um, what, do you, what do you think this production is bringing to the story that's new? Obviously, it's an ongoing series. Um, it's been going on since the 90s. Right. Um, what what do you what how do you feel that this your production with with Beast Morphers is is what what is new about this production in particular in the series? I think um, you kind of touched on it earlier. It was it's the fact that it's kind of like taking a um, like a little bit of darker elements from some of the other previous seasons along with the tradition and mixing the two um, and also maybe having a younger cast than a couple mm -hmm. of the previous seasons all mixed together has really made something different, unique, but also traditional that's working. Um, yeah, and I, very well. I, I, think that's, I think that's what they did. I, I'm not sure what formula they used, but it's awesome. Yeah, no, for sure, yeah. I, and this, I, if I'm not mistaken, this was the same writing team that did Ninja Steel, was it not? Or was it, um, I, it, it was one of the recent Power Rangers series they had a very similar so. writing team. um i think they might have worked on it i actually don't know specifically but i, I just know that they're so talented they're the nicest people ever um, yeah so yeah, yeah and it's it's, <laughs> it's clearly working i mean i'm a huge i'm an overnight fan of this series i'm so 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 so, so psyched <laughs> thank you um and then uh what do you think is going to surprise people about this show? I know this might, it, it doesn't have to be a spoilery answer, right. but if you can somehow avoid spoilers and answer yes. the question. I think um, in the future, the story is going to surprise you. Um, it's going to, like, the twists and the turns and the drama, you're just going to be sitting there like, what? Because that's how we were when we were reading the script for the first time. We were like, are you serious? This is what's happening. Um, and especially that way in season two, I feel like. 
Okay. So it yeah. just it just keeps ramping up. Ramping yeah. up and twisting. And I, 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 if I, I couldn't like, be more excited, I, 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 I can't like, possibly uh, be more excited. I feel like at the end of season one into season two is some of my favorite stuff. Okay. So yeah. that's just me personally, but they're, oh, it's good. Dang it, Nickelodeon, <laughs> with your week-to-week -week schedules. This is rough. It's rough. It's <laughs> rough on us. We want to watch it, too. <laughs> I know. This is, it's painful. I want to see it so bad. Um, and I, I definitely will be, I'm, I'm, I'm tuning in, I'm checking my phone all the time. Like, what was the date for the new, next episode again? You know, like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just like, right. oh, give it to me now. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, let's see, um, who do you think out of the, out of the crew from Beast Morphers, good guys, bad guys, who do you think has the best costume? Like, which one do you like the most? What's a, what's your favorite costume so far? so rough i don't know i might be biased but i think i like mine and zoe's which is jacqueline yeah. character i love her her ranger costume her right suit, right whatever you call it um i like i like both of ours pretty well it's oh they're really cute <laughs> <laughs> both of the yellow both of those yellow suits are are really well done yeah. i i remember before i saw the show um, I was looking at the suits and I was, I was like, why does it, you know, like they look like they had the shades, like yeah. it has that shade type of design. And at first I was like, why does it look so different than right. the, than the classic like look where it's, you know, black or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when you get into this series, you realize that the, the amount of detail they put into explaining that the tech is adapted, they, they created the right. tech. By, you know, by tapping into the grid, and then they made it themselves, right? A lot right, of it yeah, is, yeah. is self-made. It's made by, the, and so it's like, okay, I get it. These are, a, these are adaptations. It's supposed to look different. It's supposed yeah. to be the, the, this new yeah. style. And that made sense to me after I saw the first episode. I was like, I got it. Okay. And yeah, it's, because it's they took the time. Different. It's very different from a lot of the uh, traditional ones that you see. Um, at first when I saw them, I started laughing so hard. Like the boots, I'm like, those look like rain boots. But they work, yeah. and they they look badass, and like the whole thing. But I'm like, rain boots. <laughs> yeah. Was that the inspiration? Yeah, it was. It was. You know, sometimes you find that like cosplayers can kill, like they can kill it with costumes. Then you like you take a close look at how they built it, and it's like, holy cow, it was rain boots. You know, or like it was, oh, yeah. it wasn't. But in the in the collage, it with everything together, it fits and it makes it look so much cooler than if you were to just see like the ingredients to the yeah. costume just laid out that's super right. that's super fun that's awesome and yeah exactly. the yellow costumes I, I are dope. Like, cosplayers on here are like ideas yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah no doubt for sure um and then out of the cast who do you think was most like their character in real life like Compared to the show, how they were in the show versus how they are in real life, who's the most similar to their character? I feel like uh, Rory might be pretty close. Um, and maybe also Jackie. They they both have those uh, really, like, down-to-earth moments. I mean, everyone was down-to-earth. I think closest-wise, I think maybe those two. Um, yeah. It's the best way I can describe it. It's really hard to explain, but yeah, I, I think that's my, yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay, cool. <laughs> For sure. Okay, so either either Rory or Jackie. I would say, yeah. Okay. But, like, Jackie um, off screen is very much more outgoing. Um, so I would say maybe <laughs> Rory's number one, but close second for her too. Okay, right on. And then the opposite, who's the least like their character? I think I might know who you're going to say here, but you, but go ahead and, and answer that for me. Who's the least like their on-screen character? <laughs> Yourself? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's actually, that's actually not who I thought you were going to say. Um, I mean, I would definitely say me and Colby. We are not mean yeah. in real life. For sure. Um, I was I was leaning more towards Colby because he doesn't do a lot of the deceit. 
he like where he puts on a hap like a, a pleasant face and then puts on a pleasant character and then switches back. So he's like straight a jerk throughout right. the whole thing, as Absolutely. far as I've seen. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but even though like I'll, like Roxy will have those sweet moments too, it's like, I, yeah, I'm, that is me, but I'm being horrible while doing it, so it's not really me. <laughs> right, right, yeah, and that that totally makes sense. Um, I, another person I was thinking was probably going to make that list was uh, was. I don't know how to say his name, Cosme. Yeah, yeah. Cosme Flores, because he's yeah. you know he played the goof, obviously, but yeah, Christina too. They, I would say they're they're not like their characters. Um, yeah, Cosme, he um, he's very much a comedian in real life, though. He's one of the funniest guys I've ever met. Um, okay, but he's not like the Ben that you see on the show. Um, right, yeah, because so, Ben's yeah. kind of more of like klutzy and a little bit doofy, right. whereas you know comedy is. It's not yeah. necessarily like dumb or, or tripping over Absolutely. itself, you know. Absolutely, yeah. Cosme and Christina are um, they're they're not their characters for sure. Right. I actually really like those characters um, because of like they 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 the show throws those characters a bone much more than like Bulk and Skull God or any of the characters that serve that purpose. So like they actually got to like use the tracker right and like. They were trying to use the tracker and the tracker gets stuck on the truck and the truck goes back right. to the base and track the people. So it was like, they, they come back apologizing. Oh, sorry. You know, we lost the tracker. And it's like, where'd you lose it? On the truck with the bad guys. Awesome. Thanks guys. And they're like, like, yeah, that's great. yeah. <laughs> oh, this is great. Yeah. Perfect. So like they get, you know, they get to be a little more involved, I think, than some of the other um, comic relief characters in Power Rangers before them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, and then uh, if you could pick a favorite ranger of all time, who would that be? Mm, that's so hard. Oh, it's like the candy analogy again. Yeah. I know that it sucks because there's so many, there's so like, many awesome good. rangers, so much fun, you know. There's so many good – you know, I'm probably just going to do this because um, – it makes so much sense for me in my personal life. I'm just going to say Mike Chat, Blue Ranger from Lightspeed Rescue, because he's impacted my life so much. Um, That's a really cool answer. Um, so I'm going to go with him. Yeah. And that light, Lightspeed, Lightspeed Blue Ranger is nothing to, nothing to sneeze at either. He's a friggin' savage. If you see him in the show, you're like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> man. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's an unbelievable stuntman and unbelievable martial artist. I think he's like a sixth degree now or something insane. I mean, That's he's amazing. Like unbelievable. On, mm -hmm. He makes everyone look dumb. He's so talented. <laughs> That's oh. great. Yeah, and I, I heard, um, I think I heard you say one time that he was, um, he was one of the tr guys that trained Taylor Lautner. Yep. Yeah. That. That's yeah, something I mean, that. The guy that trained me also trained Taylor Lautner. Oh, no way. Yeah, but he trained him before he moved down to Southern California. So, like, yeah. he was a kid, and then yeah. the guy that trained me trained Taylor Lautner when he was young, and then Taylor yeah. moved, and then I didn't know, but, you you know, according to you, he yeah. ended up down there with the Blue Ranger. There is um, some videos on YouTube of uh, Taylor Lautner doing um, a form with the bow staff, and he's mm -hmm. just like flipping it like light, like lightning speed. It's unreal. It's so yeah. scary and amazing. And you just see Mr. Chad in the background watching, like, yep, that's mine. Like, that's <laughs> making me proud. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's friggin' sick. I love that. I dude, I, I love Taylor Lautner so much. He's he's one of my favorite like actors. I, I love that guy so much. I want him to get a role in like either either dc or marvel or something because yeah. like that that's a lot of talent that's not being actively used right now yeah he's and just on the stunt end he's phenomenal um, right and yeah i feel like he could be used somewhere so well for sure totally i I'd, I'd love to see him in a number of different roles Bring but, um, twilight abs back <laughs> i know right <laughs> yeah Heck yeah, dude. Bring that on all day. All day. Yeah. He's not my first choice, but I would, if he got, if he somehow ended up being cast as like Namor the Submariner, 
that doesn't to me i'm super aesthetic so that doesn't totally line up but right. i would not complain because i'd be like at least taylor got the role because taylor's freaking sick right he's cool he's cool yeah totally um and uh so there is there a date out right now about when we can expect um season two as of right now i don't know okay so yeah it, it's definitely going to be sometime next year um but as soon as i know i'll be able to tell you guys i'll be i'll be watching i'll be i'll be subscribed and following oh yeah and you have a youtube page too i that's how yeah. i I was going to ask you, are you are you planning to be at uh, the next Morphicon? Planning on it, yes. Now, I don't know with production how that'll only work. Um, right. So as soon as I know on, on their end, that's usually how that Rangers get to go. Um, I will be letting you guys know. I want to go so bad. So right. Bad. It's just um, about making sure that it can happen. Yes. Um, so absolutely, I want to go um, 110%. So as soon as I know those details, I'll be letting you guys know also. Right. Okay. Fair deal. And then uh, <laughs> um, do you have – so for the, for the seasons so far, and we can, we can include season two without saying what it is. But okay. do, you, do you have a personal favorite episode so far? In season two or in season one or both? both like do you, is there one that stands out to you like this is my favorite episode everyone needs to see this particular episode in season one i really liked um episode four um a lot um but something happens in episode 13 that i'm very proud of um okay. and season two episode two is hands down my favorite episode of the entire show like as, as of a collective two seasons you said 13? Uh, episode uh, two in season two. Okay, two in season two. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, I, I'm stoked. I can't wait. Um, I, I think episode 13 should be uh, watchable in the next few weeks if it's not already. Um, I, think, I think because of it airing on, like, in Australia and stuff, there's stuff um, that's all over the internet. I'm sure you can find it, actually, fairly easily. Um, okay. But yeah, yeah. That's a favorite. Oh, I'm so excited! I can't. <laughs> wait. I'm probably going to be watching it all night tonight. That's probably oh. what's going to happen. Awesome! If I can find it, it's being watched. That's just the bottom line. Um, okay. And then, um, let's see. Uh, do you do you prefer to shoot your scenes in the suit or out of the suit? Oh, um, I would say outside. <laughs> out of the suit. But yeah, both are really hot. I'll bet. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, but that's that's probably a really cool experience when you first get to have it. But then after, like, day the end of day one, you're probably like, how many scenes do I have in this in this sweat lodge, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, there was, we were filming a lot in the summertime, so there was a lot of sweating going on. Yeah, especially because a lot of the scenes where you're powered up, they're outside. Yeah, and it's like a mixture of like us and the stunt doubles, and everyone's like sweating. <sighs> yeah, like, for sure. Like, there was a there was a point where um, one of the stunt guys like he took off his boot and was like pouring out sweat. <laughs> oh my like, god, <laughs> <laughs> dude, like, that's rough. Do you need do you need something? <laughs> yeah, like a, a water or a bottle of ice <laughs> you can melt in your hand like let us know <laughs> yeah like an iv drip or something to rehydrate yeah <laughs> just like pushing the thing around You're yeah like, okay, that's everybody. awesome takes it out okay action <laughs> yeah for sure well <laughs> hey you know what this has been an amazing interview i'm so excited for everything that you have coming um you have i believe you have a movie that's coming up soon too i do i do um, what was that know, called again? It's called Starlight. Um, okay. And again, I will be letting you guys know with official release dates and all that stuff. That actually hasn't been given to me at this point yet. Um, yes. But I'm so proud of that film. I cannot wait for everyone to see it. Um, but if there's any younger Power Ranger fans watching this, ask your parents because it will be 
I think rated R uh, for good reasons. So right, it's supposed to be a horror film, is it not? Yes, it is a horror film. <laughs> okay, right on. And then um, you also have a book that's that's you've written or you're working on. Is it? I have written. It, it is finished as of right okay. now. Um, I have a team of editors and my representation in Hollywood. We're all trying to figure out release dates, and we're all talking that right now. Talking about that right now, and a awesome plan uh, to get it out there. Sweet. So, very exciting. Awesome. It's going to be happening fairly soon. It's just a matter of um, finding the perfect strategy. And that's what we're yeah. discussing with right now. Awesome. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I'll, I'll pick up the book for sure. So Thank I'll be you following so you as soon as it's out. I, I can't wait to hear about it. Read it. That'll be I super sweet. For it to be out. Oh, my gosh. I can't. Oh. Yeah. I, yeah I, saw, I saw a trailer for it or something on your page. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, I did an Indiegogo uh, campaign for it a couple years ago that was um, really successful with um, helping me get the final editing um, people on board for it. So, Right. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I can't, I can't wait to pick that up, see how that goes. Um, and everyone, make sure you follow Leanna at, uh, it's Leanna K. Ramirez, yes. right? Yes. Okay. And then you have a YouTube page as well, Leanna Ramirez. That's correct. Okay. There's plenty of ways you can follow her, follow her career, her endeavors, her creativity, all those things. Support her. Check out Beast Morphers if you guys haven't already. From an OG Power Rangers fan, no joke, it's one of the sickest, oh like, my gosh. one of the sickest Power Rangers shows I've ever seen, ever. It's so good. Huge step in the right direction. Super props to uh, Hasbro and to Nickelodeon yes. for what they're doing yes. over there. And thank you, Leanna, for being a part of that and also being a wonderful addition to the cast and picking up the production value by just being a part of it. Well, thank you. I mean, hard work pays off, and that's all I did. So, Yeah, awesome. Well, hashtag Leanna, F-O-R, Kate Bishop. If you guys support her, share them, put them in your stories, um, you know, share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you can find it, um, wherever you can post it. And I'd love to see you get your shot at this role. That'd be so great. So, so cool. You're my number one pick for this role. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And go follow this guy too, because he's awesome. Just saying, just saying. Yeah. And you can follow me. I'm probably going to be mentioning your name a few more, at least a few more times. Um, on my YouTube channel, and then, you know, we've got a lot of things coming as far as fan casting, discussing Amazing. the Young Avengers is something I've been doing a lot lately, so this will no doubt come up more than once, and uh, yeah, this is a, this was such a blast. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Uh, this was awesome. Uh, I had a blast as well, and yes, thank you so much. Yeah. All right, Leanna. May the power protect you. Thank you so much. Have a good night, guys. Toodles. <laughs>Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.